try to stay on your half of the road as you drive down the two-way. If you drive in the middle, then the examiner can fail you for driving too much on the left-hand side of the road. Make a full stop, count your three seconds, and then again, it's difficult to see. You look left for traffic, you look right for traffic, you look left again, you look to the right. This time, I'm going to make a right turn check again for traffic now again with these roads where it's very difficult to see traffic what you have to do is you have to start turning before you can see so when your mirror if you look at where my passenger side mirror is it's almost just about to the end of the curb so when your mirror gets to the end of the curb right here this is a good time to start turning to the right so I'll turn the wheel maybe about a full turn and then I'll keep checking and then as I'm checking because my wheel is already turned I'm turning on an angle as opposed to going straight out if you do not do this what will happen is your turn will more likely come out too wide so turn right into the lane again you see the bike lane off to my right. With and then if you look here, you see off to my right, you see a sign there with arrows saying right turn only or left turn only. That means that this area right here, this road at this intersection, you have to make a left or make a right. If you look ahead, you'll see that there's a do not enter sign, all right? Um, and if you look on the ground, you see that you see those same arrows for either making a left or making a right. So for example, now if you get here, um, your examiners do not try to trick you when you go to the road test or when you're taking a road test. But what they might do is put you in a situation like this where there's only one way to go and they may not tell you which way to go. If you ever get to an intersection and an examiner does not tell you which way to go, most, most of the time you go straight. But if for some reason you know that you cannot go straight, an examiner is still not telling you which way, the, which way to go, then that means that there's some type of sign or lane marking or pavement marking that is telling you which way you should go. So in that situation, that street that I just came from, there were pavement markings there telling you that if you're on the left hand side, if you're in this lane, you have to make a left turn. If you're in on the right hand side, you have to make a right turn. Just like these arrows here telling you that you could go either straight or make a right. Now this is very tricky because if you look here, there's a one way sign pointing out of this road, but Look at the car. The car is facing in that direction. All right, this is very tricky. I have no idea why that sign is that way or facing in that direction. I, I, I suspect it's supposed to be facing the other direction. And it just got turned around for some, some reason. But I'm going to make a turn on this street. I just noticed that. <laughs> I don't, they don't usually take you back this way. This is very close to Ikea. Um, but if they tell you to make a right turn, make a right turn all right the examiner will not tell you or direct you to turn the wrong way down a one-way street so if you look here um i don't know if you can see it but there is a one-way sign this is a one-way street going in this direction all right um also if you look here this road does not have that many vehicles on it um so this is this can be a very tricky road, but this is a two-way street. If you notice here off to my right, you see that sign right there? That is a stop sign. I am looking at the back of that stop sign. So if my examiner asks me to make a right turn on this road, I know that this road must be a two-way. Why? Because they will not tell you to turn the wrong way down a one-way street. And because of that stop sign, I know that traffic on this road is coming out towards me. All right? 
So with those two pieces of information, I can determine that this road is a two-way. So if I was to turn on this road, you or you 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 were to turn on this road, you need to stay more to your right. All right, this is very tricky because there's not that much here to be able to help you determine what this road is except for that stop sign, all right? I'm going straight. There's a stop sign here. It's an odd place because it looks like it's a stop sign in the middle of the road, all right? Traffic and uh, traffic come is coming from the left. Uh, the traffic coming from the left does not have a stop sign. All right, so that traffic coming from the left side there has the right of way over you at this intersection. All right, I'm gonna drive back down this road. This is a one-way road. And again here, um, if you find yourself in this lane right here, this left lane says left turn only. If you look at the arrow, the right lane says that you could go straight or make a right. So if your examiner does not tell you what to do here, you should know what to do based on what lane you're in. So for example, if you're in this lane, in the left lane, then the, your only choice when you get to this intersection is to make a left. That's the only you, the only thing you could do. In this lane over here to the right, if you're in the right lane, then you can either go straight or make a right. If your examiner says nothing, then go straight. Okay? Okay, I'm going to take you in another direction that they don't normally go. Um, so again, again, if you notice here, uh, we have the bike lane and the car is sharing the lane. In this situation, there is no possible way that you can avoid being in a bike lane uh, because the bike lane and the car and the, and, and, the, and the lane of traffic share the exact same amount of space. Amount of space. And over here, the bike lane is moved over to the right, so you don't have to worry about it. But the, the, the section that I just passed, the bikes and the car share the same lane. Here, on this road, the bike lane actually has a solid white line on both sides. Also interesting, if you notice a bike lane and it has dotted lines on it, that means you can cut across the dotted line part of the bike lane. All right, so back here, this is a little bit more residential. This is the more residential part of Red Hook. They don't normally take people back in this area, but they can. This is also part of the road test site. All right, if you go up here, you'll go straight down. they will typically go straight down. Um, then they may ask you to make a left turn here on this road. If you look, there's a one-way sign. So what you want to do is you want to stay to the right, I mean to the left. But this is a one-way. It's tricky because it's very wide. So I could see somebody believing that this is a two-way road. But this is one way. I'm going to make another left coming down, coming down this road right here. Um, if you look, there's a sign here that says two-way traffic ahead. There is not a stop sign here, so I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to proceed. And now my one-way turns into a two-way road. Tricky right here, there's a stop sign. I didn't notice at first. It, it, I didn't notice it at first because it was a truck in the way, but I did see on the ground that it had the words stop. 
all right? So your examiner will expect you to notice things like that. Uh, I'm just going to reverse so we can look at that again. Okay, very, very tricky. All right, so again, I'm driving down the road. I cannot see the stop sign from here because of this big truck, but I can see the words on the ground that say stop. All right, so if you're driving too fast, and you're not paying attention, you could just go drive right by this stop sign and drive right through it, and that would definitely be an automatic fail, all right? But if you're, you're observant, you notice the words on the ground, and then you'll be able to make the correct decision, which is to stop there, all right? So I'm gonna proceed. Here I get to another stop sign. Stop signs always make a full stop in the correct place. Wait at least three seconds before you start moving. Okay, here. Um, again, this is the more residential side. They could take you back further in, in, in that direction. Uh, but again, they don't normally go back on this side um, but if you do go on the side make sure you're very observant of your surroundings uh, because one of the tricky things you can find in Red Hook is that you have one-way streets that turn into two-way roads roads that reach a dead end roads where there's only one way to turn things like that So I'm going to take this road all the way down to where Ikea is. Again, I'm on a one-way road. So I'll drive in the middle. One-way roads, depending on how wide they are, you tend to drive in the middle. All right, stop sign. I'm going to make a left turn here. So this is Ikea, the world-famous Ikea. Look right left I see a car coming on the left side actually they're going into Ikea so I'm just going to go up and make my turn so again pay attention to the lane markings or the pavement markings they have made they, there's a lot of arrows here that tell you which way you can go Oh, again, over to my left, this is that tricky road where the sign is facing one way in the opposite direction. So that that's very, very tricky because um, I can see somebody, the examiner saying, telling somebody to make a right turn there and a the person refusing to make the right <laughs> or make the left because the sign says that that's a one way coming out. But if you look, you can see that there's a car there. But if there's no car there, then there won't be any other way for you to tell what that road is except for to trust the examiner, all right? If that's the case, trust the examiner. <laughs> Again, the examiner will not tell you to turn the wrong way down the street. So if you're not sure, and it looks like they're telling you to turn the wrong way down the road, turn there <laughs> and cross your fingers. <laughs> But turn. Uh, also, what I noticed here is as you're going around this curve, there's a bike lane to the off to the right. Uh, try to stay out of the bike lane if possible. Just try to stay as close to the yellow line as, as possible and, um, as you're going around that curve, just in case they say that you would drive, um, just in case they might fail you for driving in the bike lane as you're going around the curve. All right? So again, there's more lane markings here. Right now, I'm in, I'm in a lane that says right turn only, all right? So pay attention to the arrows. Whichever direction the arrows are facing, those are the directions that you can turn or go.
make this right turn. Try to make it a little wider, closer to the yellow line. You make this turn. And then I'm approaching the beginning of the road test site. And then that's it. And then you pull over and then you're done. turn if you come to this intersection right here if you notice off to my right there are two signs there uh, there's one sign that has two arrows on it that tells you which direction you could go at this intersection also if you look on the ground there are two separate lanes with two different sets of arrows on the right side, it says right turn only. On the left side, it says left turn only. If you look straight ahead, you will see that there's a sign that says do not enter. Normally, if the examiner does not tell you which way to go, then uh, you would go straight. But here, you cannot go straight. All right, so your only choice is either to make a left or right. And there's several signs and several pavement markings that tell you which way to go. So it is very common that the, you could get to this intersection and the examiner does not give you any instruction. If they do not give you any instruction, then you must go in the direction or turn in the direction that you see the arrow is facing for your lane. 